so much for all that sharing in the chat. Wow, I see a great range of grade levels, subject areas. I think I saw everything from elementary up to university. I saw a lot of language teachers, math, science, business, um, a lot of different countries out there. I know it's later for some of you all, so thanks for joining. Even if it's late your time, we're really excited to see you um, and really excited to share more about AI with you all. Um, I'm going to, um, we'll go ahead and get started. It's just about at the top of the hour. I'll share the resources um, in, in the chat here. So um, I made this Padlet that'll be a resource for you. You can look at it later. Um, during this session, feel free to just watch on the screen what I'm doing, and there'll be a couple, couple of things that you can participate in if you choose to as well. So um, that's up to you. Um, and I'm excited to share with you a little bit more about AI today. We've done a few sessions about AI and we've gotten feedback from some of you that um, some of it went a little bit fast. There's a lot you could say about AI. So this session is gonna be more for beginners. Um, so we, we're just gonna focus in on a few powerful tools that we hope will really help you out in your teaching and be something else you can add in to engage students a little more. To get started, um, I'm going to I'm on this Padlet that I made and I'm going to play it as a slideshow. So this is a nice built in feature of Padlet. You can click on the play button here on the right or you can start from any of these posts um, and you can play the slideshow right from here. Start slideshow from this post um, and then you can auto play it or you can page ahead. It's a nice way to share your own presentations with folks or to share student work. So I'm gonna introduce myself uh, quickly. Um, my name is Zareen Poonin-Levine. I'm the professional learning specialist here at Padlet. Prior to Padlet, I was in um, San Francisco Unified School District for many years. Um, I taught high school and elementary, and then for most of my time, I was a digital learning coach. So I worked with a lot of different teachers um, at different grade levels and helped them use technology in their classrooms. So I used Padlet and many other digital tools and I continually saw just how much it engaged and excited students to use different digital tools to show their thinking, to be creative, to collaborate with each other. And I often saw different students participating and getting engaged than the ones when we were doing something in class. So it was nice to have that variety to be able to reach each and every student in different ways. And so the hope is that some of these tools in Padlet that we're showing you today will help with that ha happen in your classrooms as well. And I also have with me Tosh Myers. Tosh, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. I'm the customer support manager at Padlet. Uh, I've been here for about four years now on the customer support team. So uh, I'll be monitoring the uh, Q&A today. So please put any uh, questions you have in the Q&A. And uh, I'll be there to help answer your questions. So uh, thanks, everyone, for joining in. And let's get started. Yeah, excited to have you here. All right, so here's our agenda for today. Um, and I'll, we'll keep putting in the resources in the chat too, if anyone uh, just joined. Um, and um, we're gonna do some getting started things. And then I'm gonna just show you three of our new AI features and show you examples, hopefully that you can use at least one of them in your class right away um, to make it really easy to get started. And as Tosh said, feel free to ask questions throughout. Um, it's easiest to find if you put those in the Q&A section, uh, but you can also feel free to use the chat to communicate with us. I'm gonna go ahead and put those resources um, back in the chat again, so you have those if you want. Okay, the first thing that you can participate in, if you'd like to, on that page that I just said, is you can, I see some people already voted here, perfect. You can put polls within Padlet. So I'd love to know what experience you have using any AI tools, that's this one here. Um, and then how much experience have you had using any of Padlet's AI tools? So I'll give you a moment to vote on that if you'd like to. While you do that, I'll just remind you if you're newer to Padlet, um, when I come to the plus sign here, I have a lot of different attachment types when I'm building a Padlet or when students are building, they're adding to a Padlet. And if I click on plus 12, I get all of these different attachment types. This one is the poll, so you can add those to your Padlets. I'll be showing you a couple other tools that are AI related in a moment. All right, so I will come back here and show the results in my slideshow. Um, and as people are voting, this is going to keep updating, which is kind of nice. Looks like we have a range of folks um, with a little bit more of a majority uh, medium level of exploration with um, other AI tools. So that's great to know. And then um, moving over to our 
how much have used Padlet. So um, some people have used it, but just looks like just getting started or low is most of our audience. So that's great. I'll be able to show you a couple of new things, I think, today um, that maybe you haven't seen yet. Thanks for participating in that. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. Actually, I'll come back to my slideshow. So first of all, just really quickly, and I know people have different definitions of what is generative AI, um, but this is how I would use, uh, how I might describe it. So generative AI uses artificial intelligence to create new content, and that content could be text. That's often what we see, ask a question, they'll bring back text, uh, maybe formatted text, but it can also create things like images, even music or uh, computer code. Um, and it's all based on patterns from existing data, and that's tons and tons and tons of data. So. Um, because of that, it's it's gathering things from a lot of different places and give you pretty good answers on on a lot of things. It's kind of like doing a Google search lots and lots and lots of times and putting all of that together. So also because of that, when you're really specific about what you want and what you're asking for, it'll give you back the best results, which kind of makes sense. So I'll show you that when we're prompting Padlet's AI, how it can bring you back some really specific tailored things to your class, as long as you kind of give it that right information. Um, and it's also kind of imitating human responses, and that's the artificial intelligence part of it. Um, so you'll see that it, it can kind of like respond to your questions and it kind of have a conversation back and forth and you can iterate on that. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways that that plays out in Padlet. I'm just going to organize myself here, moving that bar over. Okay, here we go. Um, so this is one of the most fun things in Padlet. We've heard from a lot of teachers that they enjoy this one as well. And this is something that you can literally use in your class tomorrow. I'll show you how to do that. So I put this link into the chat. This is our AI drawing tool. So all these images here are created by other teachers um, who we've been playing with this with. Um, and so I invite you to add your own image here as well. So if you click on the plus sign, here I've just included our I can't draw attachment type. That's one of our many attachment types, but it's the one that creates these AI images. So I'm going to click into here um, and I'm going to do my favorite animal. So we're asking people to do, pick a favorite animal and then have them either eating a favorite food, doing a favorite hobby or in a favorite place. So let's see, today I'll do guinea pigs eating ice cream. So we invite you to add something here as well. Um, and we can play around with this. Add more than one if you want. And we can see what images you come up with. So it's gonna take about, you saw like 15 to 30 seconds, and then it's gonna bring you back a couple of options for an image to submit here. If you don't like these images, you can always change this prompt, try something different, something maybe more specific to what you want to try to get the right result. And then I can go ahead and publish this image. Oh, good. I already have some folks joining me publishing on here. Feel free to add more than one image if you want. Beautiful. And what's happening in the background is we're using a tool called Hive to generate these images. Um, these images are also screened to be appropriate. So they're very, this is very um, student friendly. You can do this with students and know that they'll make safe images to share in your classroom. Um, this could be a really fun icebreaker that you do with your students tomorrow to learn something new about them. You could do this exact prompt, your favorite animal, or you could have some other prompt related to what you're learning. Um, if you wanted to use this uh, board tomorrow, you could, and you can come up here to this remake button. And it's going to uh, ask you a couple of things. It's saying if you want a new title for your board. And you can choose if you want to copy the posts um, as well as just the background and the setup. Um, so you can just remake that right here. And you'll have a copy that you can use for your own class in your own account. Yeah, so all of these Padlets are shared with you all. Um, I'll just give you this page again if you just came in. This is like the landing page for all of our resources today, and this is the AI drawing tool. Wow, you all are so creative. I love to see all these images uh, streaming through. Thanks for adding to this board. Um, so another thing that I'll share with you, a few more ideas about this. Um, you can use it just like I did as an icebreaker, a fun way to get to know each other. You can also use this tool directly related to your content that you're teaching. So this was an example of a teacher expanding sentence writing from simple to compound to complex sentences. And instead of just having the students write those sentences, she had them do it on Padlet and add an image. And you can see how it becomes a much more fun, interactive, collaborative activity where students can see each other's images. They'll probably want to read each other's 
sentences, and it just makes the whole thing a little bit more fun to have that visual element. I've also heard of teachers doing this for vocabulary words. So I know that, you know, my kids who are in middle school right now, they're often writing sentences with the word vocabulary words, and you could do that on Padlet and let them add an image to go with that. And not only does it make it more fun, but it really enhances the learning because they're thinking about it. They're thinking about which visual matches with this content that I'm learning. And then they're reading each other's and looking at each other's images. And it just deepens the activity a little bit uh, with a little more critical thinking and this visual creativity element that makes it um, really engaging. Oh, great question. Does this work in Spanish? Yes. So this works in all languages. We actually just recently updated our algorithm so that it works better in other languages. So I encourage you to try that right now. So come in here um, and write something in a different language if you speak another language, and it should give you back a good um, image for any language that you prompted in. Okay. So that's our first tool. We hope that you might use that this week with your students. Um, if you take one thing away, take that one away with you and use it. Um, one more thing about that one here is you might just use it for your own images as well if you're teaching about something and you want specific images. Um, so like, for example, if I was teaching a lesson about the rainforest and uh, specific species that we've been learning about, I could generate uh, these images very specific to the content that I'm teaching. And then students could talk about it, they could write about it, and it gives them another prompt to be a little bit more descriptive and to really apply what they learned to then present it uh, to others. Um, so we encourage you to try this out and students can also make images related to what they're studying. So if they're making a presentation or if they're writing a, a fictional story, they can make an image to go along with that. I was just presenting this idea to some librarians yesterday and they were talking about how it's really great because these images are all copyright free, royalty free, so they're generated and so you are able to use them wherever you want. Um, and some of the librarians were saying, oh, this is great because we always struggle with trying to find images that we're actually allowed to use and we want to teach our students those skills of um, you know, fair use. And so this is a great way to do that. They can be really specific about what they want, get a good image, and then they don't have to worry about those copyright issues. All right. Oh, I hear, I see some uh, comments in the uh, chat as well. Um, an English teacher is saying she could use it for creative uh, writing. Yeah, we've definitely seen some teachers use it in that way. Um, just a nice way to quickly make visuals to enhance whatever activity you're doing. Okay, the next one I'm gonna show you is a little bit more involved. Um, I also wanna say that that first tool is a student facing tool and intentionally that tool um, is kind of constrained to images, um, knowing that there's more conversations that you wanna have with students before you open up the whole world of AI to them, uh, AI generating content, writing essays or doing, uh, doing other activities. So within Padlet, students can use the AI image generator and it can be very rich, used for a lot of academic purposes. Uh, but you as a teacher will have some more in-depth tools to make whole boards full of content. So that's what I'm going to show you next. If you are on Padlet, um, this make page is probably where you spend a lot of your time. There are a few different ways to make Padlets. You can make a blank board. Um, if you've used Padlet a lot, that'll be most familiar. Our new tool is this whiteboard tool called Sandbox. And then today we're gonna to talk about this bottom section called AI recipes. And this allows you to build a whole Padlet giving an AI prompt. So I'm gonna show you how that works. So I'm gonna imagine, I'm gonna come here and let's do a class ideas for class activities. So imagine I'm teaching uh, fifth grade math and I want to get some activities about fractions to make it more engaging for my students. So I'll say engaging activities to learn about fractions. And so um, you can put whatever topic in there. You should you can put your own grade level, whatever topic you're teaching about. And you can see pretty quickly, it brought me back a whole board full of fun activities I can do about fractions. Um, and so this is a really nice tool to kind of, uh, to save a lot of time, first of all, like you, instead of searching or uh, searching a lot of different resources for fun activities, this can give you a lot of activities at once um, and you can choose which one you like. It looks like I got a lot of activities from this uh, one resource, so it has that image repeated. Um, but I wanna say also that 
One thing that I really like about presenting it in a Padlet that's different from using other AI tools that'll just give you back text or paragraphs of text, it's already kind of visual. We do um, a web search in addition to using an AI tool. We use a couple of different AI tools, um, ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini. And we've been experimenting with getting the best results from, from using these different tools. And then we also do an image search, a video search um, online on, on the web and bring that together into a Padlet. And then what's great is you can still edit any of this content just the way you would another Padlet. So maybe you wanna change this description. I can delete things. Maybe one of these doesn't really fit my class. I can just come here and delete a post. I can customize it however I want. And then I can use this Padlet with my students or just take the idea for myself and, and build off it and do a in-class um, in activity. Let me show you one or two others. So I just showed you the ideas for class activities. Um, it can also do really fun things like it can generate a whole map. So um, let's say we're doing history. Um, I'll do a different grade level. Um, let's see, how about high school students and um, California history. Since we're in California, I know we have people from all over. You can give it a time period. And like I was saying before, the more specific you are, the better, because then it'll just give you results that fit better to what you're about to teach. So I just put in a phrase. You could even put in a couple sentences in here to be really specific about what you want. So I'm asking for eight important points in the history of California, and I asked for it in a map format because I chose that from these buttons down here. So I'm going to hit Create. Same thing, it's going to take about 30 to 60 seconds, and it's going to generate a Padlet for me. Um, and you can definitely play around with this. So you should I encourage you to try this out with your own content area and see how well it does in terms of bringing back information. Um, What's also, also I wanna say about this is that it's um, all the information that's uh, shared is private. So we prompt um, tools like ChatGPT privately. So no information about your, um, your account or anything is shared and they can't train all that information. So this is fun because you can see everything on a map and it creates posts with important events that I asked for in the history of California. So I have things like the gold rush, the earthquake, um, and it plots it with an image and text information. Um, and same thing as before, I can edit this. So I can come in here and edit this, or I could share this with students and I could say, um, why don't you edit it? See if you wanna add or delete anything and change it to be um, based on what you research or what you found out. So the map is really fun. Um, a lot of different uses. It could be a historical map. It could be a current day map about world volcanoes or earthquakes. Um, it could be a, a map about a book you're reading. Some teachers were saying they had students map the settings of a book they're reading, which I thought was a really cool use of this as well. I'm gonna show you one more, and then um, I'm gonna show you the third tool that, I, that is, is really fun to do even a little bit more. This last one is a reading list. And this time let's do middle school students. So sixth through eighth grade. And I wanna get a reading list, um, let's say English language arts. And let's say we are reading historical fiction right now. And I'm gonna ask for current historical fiction novels from diverse authors, also with discussion questions. So same thing, I can, I can, and it's kind of fun. I could create these forever. There's so many different activities you can get from here or books or things like this. So it gave me some books here on the left. And the third tool that I wanted to show you is this little thing that popped up here on the right. This assistant, this is our AI assistant, teaching assistant, you can now further update this board. So it pops up every time you make an AI generated board. Um, and then um, you can do more things to the board. So this put my board into sections. It said award-winning historical fiction, global perspectives. Um, I, I, I kind of wanted it all in one list. So I'm gonna ask the AI assistant to change that about my board. I said, change the format to a wall without sections. So it's gonna take maybe like 10 to 15 seconds. And now it just rearranged my board. It took away the sections and put everything in one. Maybe I want a couple more um, example. So it gave me the eight that I asked for. Um, I'm going to ask for a couple more. So now I'm going to say add three additional historical fiction books to the list. It's going to take uh, maybe a little longer to add those posts, but they should show up at the bottom here in a moment. Great. It just added a couple more for me. Um, 
Now I want to give this list to my students um, and I could customize this board by going into my settings and um, adjusting things, but I can also do it from my assistant here. So I want to turn on comments here so that two students can tell me if they're interested in these books. So I'm just going to say turn on comments. And now the board and it just turned on comments. So now um, students, I can share this. I say this is a great book. This is an example of a comment. So if I then shared this with students, they could comment on the books. Um, I could do other things in this assistant. The assistant also gives you a couple of suggestions here for things you might be able to add. Um, so you can just play around with this and you can see um, what else you can do here to reprompt it, to add more um, prompts or, or to adjust the settings of the Padlet itself. All right, I see a few questions in the chat. Um, lots of enthusiasm. I know this feature is really fun. It's really fun to show people. Um, uh, there's a question about the recording and Tosh answered it. Um, yeah, we'll be sharing out the recording of this session afterwards. Feel free to share it with anyone. It'll be posted on our YouTube channel and I'll give you the link to that shortly. So lots of fun you can have with that. Um, I also included here a link to lots more examples. Um, you can of course try it yourself and make your own examples. Uh, but this page has a bunch of different examples at different age levels. So for example, if you teach um, younger students, you could click on one of these. This was classroom activities about uh, the, what was it about practicing phonic sounds? That's right. So on all of these examples, I have a little yellow box that shows you the prompt that I used. So this could be a fun thing to explore to just see um, what's possible. And then you could try it on padlet.com on the make page and generate your own padlets. Ah, great question. So I see um, a couple of questions about how do you create section headers? So that's something that's in settings right here. So almost everything that you'll want to change about the formatting of your Padlet is under that settings gear. You have your wallpaper, your color scheme, um, your format. So that tells you if it's in columns or in rows. And this is where you can create sections right here. You'd say group post by section, and then you'll get these section headers and you can add as many sections as you want. All right. Okay, keep the questions coming. Thanks for uh, participating. So I showed you these three uh, features, the AI drawing, which you could really use tomorrow, just uh, create a blank Padlet and tell people to use that I can't draw tool. This um, create with AI that you can create your own Padlets with, you can experiment with. And then after you create any AI Padlet, that's when the AI assistant pops up on the left there. Um, it also is shown with these three little stars in the bottom right for AI generated Padlets. All right, so um, this is an optional thing you can try right now with us. Um, you can uh, let me know, I'm gonna put this link in the chat as well. Um, and if you'd like to participate with me on this Padlet, you can like or comment on any of these um, examples. So these are examples. You haven't seen all of these examples, but you can click into them. The AI drawing we all did together. So you can say, I love creating animals. You can create a, um, a, a comment right there. I'll also point out that you can comment in text um, or you can hit the little plus button here and you can actually comment with images or video. So you can have like a whole back and forth uh, with, an, with an image or a video or other kinds of comments. So I, if I were gonna, for example, um, maybe I'll find a guinea pig since I did that on the AI generated image. So I can put that in my comment if I want, wanted to. So I see some people liking these different um, options. So feel free to keep uh, liking things. Oh, great. And adding some different kinds of text comments or image comments on there. Um, and you have all these resources that you can explore. You're also really welcome to copy anything and make your own version of it that you thought was useful. All right, I'm gonna show you a couple of kind of closing resources. Um, Ah, great. I have another question about can um, children edit a Padlet without logging in? Um, the answer is yes, as long as you set up your Padlet to have the right kind of permissions. So just the way right now on this Padlet, I'm oh, sorry, on this one, um, I am allowing you to write and comment on here, even though you're, some people are logged in, but not everyone is. That's under the share error up here at the top. I made my visitor permissions to writer. So that means anyone that comes to this Padlet can write posts on it. And then for my link privacy, I also have a few options. Um, 
Secret means that if you have the link, you can access it. Public means anyone can access it and find it. And for our school accounts, we also have some more privacy options that keep it within your school. So only people logged into your school can access it. And that's special for our, our school accounts. Oh, great, great question. The next question was, is this a free, um, is there a free version? And yes. So let me just uh, make this a little bigger here. So these are questions that we often get. So Padlet is free and everything I showed you is available in the free account. We just limit the total number of Padlets that you can make. So you can make three Padlets for free. It's a great way to just try it out and see um, if you like it and see if you want to buy more Padlets. Um, and then if you do want to, there's uh, information linked here for our Padlet subscriptions. And I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, there's many different options. You can buy just an individual account if you want more Padlets. Um, and then you can get a school account, which we really encourage because then other teachers at your school can use it together. You can have some other features like a private Padlets just for your school logins. And you can do some other integrations like have it work with your sign-on process, have it, um, have it work with your learning management system if you use one. And so we'd be happy to talk with you further about that if you want. All right, so I know that was quick. I tried to give you a couple of uh, quick tools that you could use right away. And yes, you can use them on the free account. So you could open an account right now for free and make that AI generated image board that you could use with your students. Um, and so we hope you have fun checking that out. Um, as, I was, as we were mentioning at the beginning, um, we have more webinar sessions coming up in November and they're all on this page. That page, this page here is also where we have all the recordings. Um, I also link to one section in this page that has lots more about AI. So if you all want to go deeper into AI, we did some great sessions partnered with some other folks. So we partnered with Common Sense Media, with AI EDU, with code.org, um, and those are really fun sessions. So you can check those out if you want to go deeper into those recordings. Um, before we, we I happy, we're happy to take any other questions. I am gonna put um, one more link in here because we always really love your feedback. We actually uh, ran this session as a, as a kind of AI for beginners because of your feedback at previous sessions. So um, uh, if you wouldn't mind spending a moment to just give us feedback on this session. Um, and then I'll put one more thing in here. Um, Hello at Padlet.com is our help email. So if you're wondering about something or if you're confused about something or just have a question, uh, feel free to reach out to us there. Oh, great. I'm so glad I see some appreciation in the chat for liking these sessions and wanting to hear about the future sessions. So we'll definitely keep letting you all know about our future sessions. Um, and we're trying to do it at a variety of time zones. So I know some people joined us late in the evening or maybe early in the morning. Um, so we have some other sessions coming up at other times. So we hope you check out one of those. Tosh, is there anything else that was coming up in the questions or in the chat that you want to highlight? Uh, I just noticed a lot of questions about uh, how students can use Padlet. And um, there's a few different things to consider. Um, one is if you just send a link to the student and the um, share settings are set to secret, um, anyone with the link can access and start posting. They can set their own name and start posting. Um, but a lot of times um, we recommend changing the link privacy to secret login. And what that does is basically uh, enforce your students to log in so you can actually see um, who's making those posts. So if you're sharing pilots with students, I typically recommend changing the privacy to secret login, having them log in with Google. So then their um, email and their name will be uh, there and they won't be entering in like random names um, that they decide. Um, so that's one thing to definitely keep in mind when um, interacting with students um, in Padlet. And, um, and uh, one other thing is that um, if you're interested in a school subscription, um, we have um, special pricing for schools. Um, and if you email into sales at padlet.com, uh, we're able to provide you um, and your teachers some options on how you can use Padlet in groups. So definitely email us at sales at padlet.com and we'll make sure that um, you're able to have access to all these features plus a lot more school specific features and um, the ability to create unlimited Padlets. Um, so definitely send us an email if you're interested. Um, and you can find um, all of our sessions at padlet.link slash sessions. So 
um, stay up to date there for upcoming sessions, uh, the recordings of past sessions. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, and I think that's about it from Userine. So thanks so much, Josh. And thanks for all your participation and your questions. Yes, we hope to see you at future sessions. Um, I just put this link uh, one more time in the chat for today's resources. So everything we went over today is on this. So you can go back and look at anything. And the recording will be up shortly on our webinar page. All right, well, we will sign off. Uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks for coming.